All right, in this video, I'd like to illustrate the relationship between um, the Unix directory structure, uh, in particular, the directory structure that's contained inside of the web root, which is uh, public underscore HTML for us, and the URL bar on your browser. So I'm going to attempt to illustrate that right now. Uh, let's see, let me go over to Putty here and see what we've got going on. So I'm logged into Copeland here and I'm in my web root, which is actually I'm not in my web root. I, I'm, I'm good, good thing I did PWD. I'm in my home directory, so I need to be in my web root, which is public underscore HTML, right? This is the root of the directory structure where Apache is allowed to travel, look at, at things. So I want to see the end of that. And I'll take a look in there. So what we see, and I believe that we have all uh, created this index.html page there, right? Uh, in addition, I've created another file here called test.html. It is in at the top of the web root. It's just it's inside of public underscore HTML, as you can see right there. All right, let's take a look at what's in this right now. B I C O test dot HTML. Okay, and this is what we've got here. Uh, this is a newly created test.html file. Let's write a little bit more in there so we understand what we're looking at when we see it. It is located, I'm gonna say at the top of public underscore HTML. Okay, so I'll write out control X. I'm going to do a control O so I can keep body open. Control O will be enough. All right, so now at this point, what we want to do is head on over to the browser. Well, you know what? I've got one up right now. I want to show you what's there. Control, that'll be a good part of this exercise. Let me get out of Pico. If we do, Negative. I don't really need to do an L up negative L to show you this. Oops. So there's the index that we made. I'm going to first go to that index. And then I'm going to, I want to show instead of that index page, which is the default page, right? I want to see test.html. I'm going to show you how to see test.html. Okay, so let's head over to the browser for a second here. And this is, if I refresh it, you'll see I'll do a control. That's the index.html that we've been talking about for some time now. And if you look at my URL up at the top, it's the http colon slash slash udl.edu tilde w boyer. Notice how I did not have to write in there index.html. And that's because the name of that file, index.html, is special. It's special in that if I don't type the name of a file that I want from the web route, uh, server, from Apache, then Apache will attempt to find a file called index.html and will return me that one from whatever directory I'm in, right? So here to illustrate that, we know that test.html, let's come back over here for a second, test.html is in the same directory that index.html is in. So if I want to see test.html, what what's happened is I didn't type a name, so Apache grabbed this one for me, right? If I attach a name, Apache will give me the named, if it exists, it'll give me the named file instead. So let's prove that real quick back to the browser and I'll just type test dot html there it is so what's 
worth noting here is that we know that test.html, this file, is in public HTML. We know that index.html is there. So the part that comes before the file name, this, must translate to the directory public underscore HTML. So it's, it's like looking at public underscore HTML slash test.html. And let's look at this again, just so we can draw that comparison. If I do PWD, uh oh, I gotta do that. PWD, enter. We see there's a whole lot of stuff here, right? It goes all the way back to home, root, home. So this is a folder inside, public HTML is a folder that's inside this folder, that's inside this folder, that's inside this one. Apache's stuck in this folder. That's its web root, right? It can't go outside of it. It can't go higher than this. It can't go up any further up this directory structure. So when I type something into the web browser, it's translating to the web root slash whatever file I want, right? So I have, instead of typing public.html, I type in all of the other stuff that we've got up there, which is, here, let's look there, which is HTTP colon, uh, HTTP colon slash slash udl.edu tilde username. Then in that folder, we have a file called test.html, which is right there. Okay. That said, in my directory, I have a folder for Sys101. I have a folder for Sys103. Let's go into, if, I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna want a, a folder in here that's appropriate for which class you're in, 101 or 103. You would use mkdir to create that. So you would want mkdir space the folder name, which would be either Sys101 or Sys103. For this video, I'll just work in Sys101. So I'm gonna CD into CISC 101. Take a look at what's in there. If there's anything in there, I don't know. No, there's nothing in there. So let's create a file called, um, I'll call it CISC 101.html. So this is a file that we're just playing around with this, right? So I'll, ultimately I'm gonna wanna delete this file. Enter. This is, now let's, let's write the whole directory structure out. It's public underscore HTML slash CISC 101 slash CISC 101.html, the name of the file. Uh-oh, I did a nine. Dot HTML, dot HTML. Okay, so at least there we know. I've written effectively the PWD along with the file name. And so we, we know we're going from public HTML into the folder called, there is a folder called Sys101 in the folder called public HTML. That's this folder is in this folder, and inside of this folder, there is a file called sys101.html, and that's the one I'm gonna want. So you know what, I'm gonna copy this right now while we're here. I don't think I'll need that, I'll take just that. I'll copy that so that um, <laughs> I can, control X, yes, and enter. All right, so now we'll go back to the browser and see if we can hit that file. So from here, if we're gonna consider everything up to and including w, tilde w boyer as public underscore HTML, then the next part I should need here would be that whole CISC 101 I think I didn't take that, so I'll put that in. Let's see if that worked. Yeah. So 
Yeah, it's the CISE 101 was the folder inside of public HTML, right? And sys101.html is the file inside of the folder sys101, which is inside of the folder public underscore HTML. All right, let's do an enter and see if it works. There you go. So in Unix, since we're able to go higher than public HTML in the directory structure, we see this name all the time, public underscore HTML, because we log into a directory that's above there, right? This folder, public HTML, is contained in your numbered folder, which is your home directory. So we're accustomed to seeing public underscore HTML. Since Apache, it can become, Apache can make public underscore HTML its PWD. Let me jump back to Putty. We've got bash, so I'm going to do cd space dot dot ls, and we are currently in pwd. We're in public underscore HTML, right? So as far as Apache is concerned, when you make a f initially, when for instance we were looking for test.html, Apache's PWD was public underscore HTML, right? So Apache cannot see public underscore HTML. In the same way, since, it's, since public underscore HTML is Apache's PWD, it can't see it any more than we can when public underscore HTML is our PWD. And by see it, I mean this. When I use ls, it is not in the list of files in here, right? Because public HTML is not a folder in, or, or a file, either way, inside of the public HTML folder. It's not inside of itself. So when we say I can't see things, or when I say I can't see things, what I mean is the contents of the currently opened folder. And so public underscore HTML is the first folder inside of our directory that Apache can open. So it can see the contents of public underscore HTML, provided it has permission to go in there. And we double check that to make sure that it does. So Apache can do an LS, but it has to do it from here, right? So we, Apache doesn't know anything about public underscore, well, it does in the background, but it can't, it can't use public H, underscore HTML as one of the names that it traverses through when it goes through the directory structure. So we don't see it that way. Uh, Apache doesn't see it that way, and we don't see it that way in the URL either. So when we knock, this is knocking on Apache's back door, uh, port door number 88, uh, sorry, door number 80. We knock on that door and we request a file or we can go deeper, we can dig deeper in through whatever directory structure exists in public HTML. So when you look at this, you just consider that first part, public H underscore HTML, and then bump, 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 deeper, deeper, deeper. So this concept can go deeper and deeper. We can build as many folders as we want. Well, that's there's no folder in there, right? I can mk dir another folder inside of the folder sys101. I'll just call it test dir, right? So there's another folder inside of sys101. Do an ls, we'll see it, right? So it's visible from there. And remember, Apache's allowed to come into this directory, right? As long as ls negative l as long as, oh, it's a good thing we checked. Well, wow, wrong one. Here it is. It's this one. It's test dir. As long as the remember Apache is a part, a member of the third group of permissions here, right? This is a folder. Test dir dir is a directory folder. So Apache would need to have execute permissions on this folder in order to open it right? Opening of a folder or directory, whatever you want to call it, 
requires execute permission and it has it by default. So now let's CD in there. And there won't be anything in here, right? Because I just created it. So M, um, sorry, pico, P I C O, test dot HTML. I'm just creating some random test file. Um, and I'll say this is test dot HTML. I guess we should write the whole thing out. Public starting at the web root. Slash. So slashes are separating folders, right? So AFC 101. Slash test T E S T B I R slash the file name. That's the one we're looking at right now. That's the here it is written right here. And that is the name of the file and, the, and its location all the way back. Now when we do PWD inside of um, uh, Pico, I'm sorry, not inside, we wouldn't do Pico. Pico doesn't know PWD. Pico is the text editor. We would do that inside of Putty. PWD just shows the directories. It would only show us this up to here. And then this would be a file, not a directory. So we would, in PWD, we would see only this. And I'll show that to you real quick while we're at it. So we'll, oh, you know what? I want that actually. Let me have all of this. So I'll, I can use that. So I'm just going to copy it so I don't have to type it all in when I get there. So let's control X. Yeah, I want to save it. And I want it to be called that. And so let's do PWD, enter. See, it's only showing the directory structure up to there. LS shows if there's a if there's a directory or a file in the test DIR directory, then that would show up inside of that folder with an LS. Uh, but PWD doesn't show file names as well. It shows all the files and folders that exist in this directory. All right, so we're, we're, when, we, when I wrote in that web page, well, I'll show, I'll show you when we go to it. So let's go back to the browser and let's say, what do we do to this URL? So I'm gonna back it up a little bit here. Um, all right, so test year slash, and it's called test.html, right? There we go. This is the text that I typed in that file, test year. And so we, we know that it's located, if we're looking from the perspective of the Unix operating system, and we're logged in there, then we know it's located in public HTML, sys101, test deer, and the file's called test.html. If we're looking at the perspective of the browser, then we're replacing public underscore HTML with HTTP colon slash slash udel.edu tilde uh, w boyer, in my case. And then the rest is the same. So that brings an interesting possibility where any of the sites that you're visiting, if you see, a, look at the <laughs> next time you're, you're out browsing the web, look at the directory structure up there. You could actually do something like this and it'll work. I could say, well, that's an interesting file in that directory. So let me back up. Oh, this will be an interesting thing too. So I, I wound up with an index showing me all the contents of this directory. And that's because this directory, test DIR, had read permissions set on it. Let me come back here again real quick. I'll just show you this because I can do it pretty quickly because we're in that directory right now, right? Um, PWD. See, we're in the test DIR, so I got to go up one to be able to see it in an LS. All right now, I can see test deer in an LS. You can see the contents of 
the PWD. Oh, I went up one. I didn't. I didn't do a PWD. <coughs> I'll do it. PWD. So I the currently open folder is Sys One Hundred One. Inside of that folder is all of this stuff. Sys101.html and a folder called test dir. I wouldn't know it's a folder called test dir. I would know it was a folder unless I had done this. And then I can see the D there, right? So that's the only thing. Other than the fact that I built the thing, test dir, uh, so therefore I know that it's a directory and I didn't name it with a dir on the end as kind of a hint but given just the contents of LS, I can't tell, right? Just by looking at it. I, there's nothing to say that this is not a file. Just because it has DIR in the end doesn't mean that makes it a directory. That's just a, a naming convention that helps me realize that that's a directory without having to do an LS negative L. All right, so back to the LS negative L. So we want to do something with that um, direct uh, that that directory listing that we saw. You don't see that very often on web pages, right? So the problem is that what's causing that? It's not really a problem. That's a decision that you that people make. Do I want that directory structure to show or not on a web page? We may just want to have something else happen. And so let's do this. Well, the reason why we're seeing it is because Apache has read permission on that file. It really only needs execute in order to be able to open the file and get what's in it. The read permission here, this one, you can see it? Well, I've got both of them, but the read permission there is what's allowing that to print. So we could chmod, and that would be change the permission, take that R away from it there. So. We'll take them both away, I guess, huh? So why don't we just call this seven? We'll leave ourselves with all permissions. So that's seven. And then the next, for we'll do both group and everyone else. We'll just use the same number. So I'll worry about what everyone else should be. And it should have just an X in it, right? So that's the one spot. So we'll do both group and everyone else one. And then I will say what it is I'm trying to set the permissions on. T E S T D I R. It will not. Did I misspell something there? C H. Oh, I did N O D. C H M O D. There we go. No errors. I lost negative O to prove to you that it's changed. It's, there's just an X there and an X there. There's no more R. So let's come back here and to the browser to bring you back to. I brought myself back, but not you. And then refresh. So now it's going to give us a, permit, a forbidden error, but that doesn't mean that we can't. See the file that's in there. See, test.html is a file that lives in that folder. That permissions problem that we just saw means that we can't attempt to read the what's in the folder. We have to know what's in the folder. Okay, so um, there's another possible area where you could get a permissions problem, um, and so you want definitely want in your browser in your URL up here, you definitely want to, generally speaking, you want this to be a file as the last thing in the list. So you're asking for a file in this folder, which lives in this folder, which lives in public underscore HTML. I think that should help you understand how the Unix directory structure relates to uh, the browser directory uh, URL. So when you're when you're out and about, you can always start doing things like the you know, 
say, well, I'm going to see what's in this directory. Where am I? Right here. So let's see if what's in that one. We'll see this one has read permission on it as well. So typically, I think most people would want a permissions problem on this. But the interesting thing about, especially from our position when we're, we're just learning how to do this, I can see the contents of this directory. So it's kind of operating like an LS, right? When I did that, I get an LS. These are the contents. So I can click these things and see what's in there, right? And then I can use the back arrow to go back to it again. I can click the other one, test ear. And remember, we, we changed the permissions on test ear, so we can't just see it. So there, there is an argument, especially at our point in, in this learning game, there is a good argument, I think, to leave read permission on the directories. But I think in a, in a production environment where you're actually doing something that you're getting paid for, I think you don't want, I think you want that to happen. I don't think you want people nosing around in there. Uh, I don't see, I don't personally see a security problem with having this index up here. It just kind of looks ugly. A security expert might have a good reason why this is a bad idea to let people see the contents of the directory. Um, but I, I, I can't really speak to it. I, I don't know of one myself. So anyway, I think that will, I think that'll do it for this video. Um, if we have any issues, we'll um, discuss it during our Zoom meeting. Any, any issues that you come across here. All right, catch you later.